ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. Police say a six year old near City Heights was rushed to the hospital after accidentally shooting himself. San Diego police say the child was playing with the gun about eight o'clock tonight when he shot himself in the chest. They say the bullet went through. The child was conscious and breathing when he was taken to Rady Children's Hospital. Several bars around San Diego County have less than an hour before they once again have to close their doors. And the bars and restaurants that do get to stay open will have a new curfew at 10 p.m. That's starting tomorrow night. As ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura explains, county leaders say the closures and the curfews are necessary, especially ahead of the 4th of July. San Diego County is tightening its restrictions for bars and restaurants in an effort to curb growing coronavirus numbers. It comes ahead of the 4th of July weekend as they worry about crowds and visitors. The number one source of community outbreaks is bars and restaurants. More than a quarter of all active outbreaks are coming from these uh, settings. On Tuesday, county officials zeroed in on places that serve food and alcohol, putting in place a 10 p.m. curfew for them. If patrons are in by 10 p.m., they can't stay until 11 p.m. But there is not supposed to be anyone in an establishment between the hours of 11 p.m. and 5 a.m., except for staff to close, clean, or get ready to open. It follows orders that the county reinstated Monday that alcohol can only be served to customers that have ordered food and are sitting at a table. Bars, breweries, and wineries that do not serve food have been ordered to close, effective July 1st. There is, however, an exception for wineries that serve wine outdoors. That means places like Hungry Hawk Vineyards and Winery in Escondido could remain open. The owner says he has strict social distancing and face covering requirements in place, and everyone is seated outside. We're very cognizant of what the requirements are, and we carry them to the letter. Uh, you know, I mean, we're very open for any inspection that might want to be made. The tightening restrictions on San Diego's social scene comes ahead of the 4th of July weekend and high numbers of COVID-19 cases in nearby counties. Bars have been closed in surrounding counties like Los Angeles, Riverside, San Bernardino. And San Diego County officials worry people from those counties could look elsewhere for nightlife options. As a result, it is prudent that the county of San Diego also limits its access to locations where young adults gather for the month of July. The orders will remain in effect until further notice. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. And as the holiday weekend approaches, state and local leaders are especially concerned about family gatherings. I've had patients where they live with seven people with three or four generations of family and the whole family is sick. Our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo spoke to an infectious disease doctor about the risk that comes with these types of gatherings. Experts say if it's not somebody that you live with, you shouldn't be getting together with them for barbecues or parties. And that's something they want people to understand ahead of the 4th of July. A warning from doctors about gathering for celebrations during the holiday weekend. The message, don't do it unless it's with people you live with. You can spread it throughout your whole family, and we've seen that in cases. Although it's best to keep celebrations to your own household, Dr. Michelle Ritter says there are things you can do to try to lower the risk of spread. It's not the funnest thing to wear a mask, but it's the best thing, the safest thing we can do right now. So I'd say outdoors, masks stay apart. And no physical contact. No hugging. As much as we want to, and we're dying to hug each other, try not to do that. Dr. Ritter says the biggest challenge is making the younger generation understand they could be asymptomatic and unknowingly spread the virus to a person at risk. They want to hang out with their buddies. They want to socialize. They feel a little invincible from the disease because they're not getting that sick from it. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. Family gatherings aren't the only thing officials are keeping an eye on ahead of the 4th of July weekend. As ABC 10 News reporter Rachel Bianco shows us, some are worried crowds from out of town will flood our beaches and lead to yet another spike in cases. The sun is out, the surf is calm, a perfect beach day for people vacationing from Arizona. We made the decision to go ahead and come on our vacation because uh, we figured, you know, you can't really run and hide from this, you know. We just all have to do our part and, you know, just be aware of the situation. Ernesto Orduno says he's taking precautions, especially with coronavirus cases spiking in both Arizona and California. 
following protocol, you know, we're washing our hands, you know, as much as possible using hand sanitizer, uh, keeping away, uh, distancing ourselves, you know, as much as possible. San Diego is just days away from its biggest holiday of the summer. Beaches in L.A. will be closed. Arizona is largely shut down. That has some people who live along the coast worried that even more visitors will head to San Diego, possibly bringing the virus with them. Nobody's wearing a mask. Nobody's social distancing. People are walking around my neighborhood all the time or like on the beach, yeah. just like it's normal and nothing's normal anymore. Deborah Moore lives in Encinitas. She thinks the beaches should close for the July 4th weekend and beyond. I'm all for shutting everything down. It's not working to open up. And that's been proven by all the different, all the rates. Delmar Councilman Dave Drucker also has concerns. People are very worried about uh, the lifeguards being overwhelmed and uh, the whole city being overwhelmed with, with visitors as there's nowhere else to go. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says it's up to city leaders and coastal communities to determine if the beaches should close. So far, no decisions have been announced. Rachel Bianco, ABC 10 News. As county leaders bring back some closures and restrictions, Governor Gavin Newsom says that he is planning some of the very same action at the state level. Tomorrow we'll be making uh, some additional announcements on efforts to use that dimmer switch that we've referred to and begin to toggle back on our stay at home order and tighten things up. The framework for us is this. If you're not going to stay home and you're not going to wear masks in public, we have to enforce and we will and we'll be making announcements on enforcement tomorrow. But we also have to recognize that the spread when you're not at home in indoor facilities is much more probable than in outdoor settings. The governor says he expects four more counties to go on the state coronavirus watch list as of tomorrow. Today, the county reported another 317 positive cases to bring our total now to over 14,000. And there were four new deaths because of COVID-19, bringing that total to 365. Legoland will not reopen before August 1st. The theme park announced it's putting off any plans to reopen because of what it called the constantly changing coronavirus situation. The park did say it would soon announce a reopening date for the Legoland Hotel. The Sea Life Aquarium reopened 10 days ago. When the park itself reopens, it will be at reduced attendance with temperature checks for employees and face covering requirements for everyone. Legoland has been closed since March. The Senate passed an extension to the Paycheck Protection Program with just hours to spare tonight. The PPP is now active until August 8th. The program was set to expire with more than $130 billion in allocated funds that remained unused. Now the Democratic-led House needs to act on the extension. The program provided aid to small businesses struggling during the coronavirus pandemic. One police officer in Tulsa, Oklahoma is dead. Another is in critical condition after being shot in the line of duty. Investigators say Sergeant Craig Johnson stopped to back up Officer Arash Zarkeshin on a routine traffic stop yesterday. The driver refused to get out of the vehicle. The officers asked the driver, David Ware, to get out of the car 12 times. He refused. Johnson tried to use his taser, but Ware grabbed it. Then Johnson used pepper spray. That's when Ware got out of the car, reached under his seat and opened fire on both officers, shooting both multiple times. Sergeant Craig Johnson lost his life protecting the lives of every Tulsan. Sergeant Johnson was a good man who made our lives better, who trained his fellow officers to be better. Ware fled and got picked up by a driver named Matthew Hall. After a manhunt, both of them were arrested. Sergeant Johnson, who was shot in the head, died today. Police say Officer Zarkeshin is in critical condition, but he is responsive to hospital staff. Tomorrow, the new trade agreement among the U.S., Mexico and Canada will go into effect. Replacing NAFTA with a new trade deal was a key campaign point in 2016 for President Trump. Some of the changes include new provisions for digital commerce, more stringent rules of origin for auto parts and new minimum wage requirements for certain auto workers. 
That deal was signed by the three countries' leaders in November of 2018. The women who sued Harvey Weinstein for sexual assault received a $19 million settlement today. The women are also free to share their stories after being released from non-disclosure agreements. Bankruptcy and district court still have to sign off on the settlement. The 67-year-old Weinstein is currently serving a 23-year prison sentence after he was convicted of rape.